Okay, great night. How are you guys doing? Uh, I would like to welcome you to our third lesson uh, in this series of video lessons. I hope you guys have been well. Uh, this is your teacher, Marshall A.C. Candiado. Today we are going to be looking at the topic assets, right? We are moving on to a whole new concept, assets and bases. Bases are also known as alkalis, but today we will be looking at the topic assets, right? Assets. But before I go on to introduce this whole new topic and look at the objectives for today's lesson, I hope you guys recall what we did in lesson one and lesson two. In lesson one and in lesson two, uh, what did we look at? What did we look at in lesson one and lesson two? We looked at firstly decomposition reactions. We looked at decomposition reactions, how you are able to break down large compounds into their base elements or into simpler compounds. Then we went on to look at synthesis reactions, which are in a way the opposite of decomposition reactions. Because with the synthesis reactions, what you're now doing is you're taking the base elements and you are joining them. You are joining them to form a larger compound, to form a larger compound. And that is what we call a synthesis reaction. Right, so today, in our third lesson, what is our topic? Our topic for today is acids. We are going to be looking at acids. And what are the objectives? What are our objectives? Because observe that in every single lesson, we have objectives. So by the end of this lesson, what should we have been able to have achieved? By the end of this lesson, we should be able to say we can now uh, identify, we can now identify uh, acids in def everyday life. Identify acids in everyday life to say, when you look at the different chemicals that are there in your house, of course, you know you have chemicals in your house. You have chemicals in your house. If you go into the toilet and you look at the bleach, right, the domestos or the hapic that you use to clean the toilets, that is a chemical. Right? If you look at the vinegar right, that you put into your fresh chips, right? if you look at the different substances that are in your house, they are actually chemicals. And some of those chemicals are actually acidic in nature. They are acidic in nature. So by the end of this lesson, we should be able to identify, to say, oh, so this one is uh, an acidic uh, substance is an acidic substance even though you have it in your own house by this end of this lesson you should also be able to describe uh, the composition I need you guys to be able to describe the chemical composition of acids okay so when we have an acid it obviously has certain elements in it because acids are compounds acids are compounds but you guys should be able to describe you guys should be able to describe the chemical composition of these acids to say what is found in these acids right so also what are you going to be able to do by the end of this lesson uh, you should be able to outline right the final part you should be able to outline uh, how indicators how indicators can be used to detect acids uh, in different substances right so you should be able to outline the use of indicators in the detection of acids those will be the objectives of this lesson Right. I hope you guys are holding these notes. These are the notes that I'm explaining for today. Right. So let's uh, take some time. Let us take some time. You will pause the video. Just again have a look through the objectives that I've stated. Look, have a look through at the objectives that I've stated. Just get an understanding of them, please. Okay. So I hope you guys have managed to look at the objectives, the objectives of this lesson. Right, so what I have done as well at this point is uh, I've written the, some of the common acids, some of the common sources of acids that we have in the household. Right, but first, let us try to define what an acid is. So if you, if you have an acid, okay, and you want to say, is this an acid? How would you tell that something is an acid and how would you be able to define an acid? So an acid is a substance that is a pH that is less than 7 on the pH scale, right? That is a simple definition for this level where we are at. We could also say an acid is a substance that completely dissociates in water, right? Deionizes in water to form hydrogen ions and the respective anion 
of whichever anion is attached to it, right? So if you were to have hydrochloric acid, I'm going a bit further. If you were to have hydrochloric acid, it's going to break down completely and it's going to have hydrogen ions fully dissociated. That would be a strong acid. Right, but for you guys, uh, let's just say an acid is a substance with a pH that is less than seven. In this lesson, we will also talk about pH. Right, that is a scale that tells us how acidic a substance is. Right, so I hope you manage to get that the definition of what an acid is. Right, so having now said. An acid has a pH less than 7. We are now able then to go into the house and then look at different substances and say what are the common household acids, substances that have that are acidic in nature that we found in the that we find in the house, right? And here I listed some. I, I hope you guys maybe will be able to think of more and you'll be able to list more in addition to these ones. But these ones are the ones that I was able to get. Uh, to say cool drinks, you know cool drinks, soft drinks, fizzy drinks, right, fizzy drinks, they are acidic in nature, they are acidic in nature, if you think of Coca-Cola, right, Fanta, those drinks are actually acidic in nature, vinegar, vinegar, also known as acetic acid, also known as acetic acid, it is acidic in nature, in lemons, right, citrus fruits, citrus fruits, they are also acidic in nature, uh, we also have batteries, definitely. Batteries contain acids in them. So these are some substances or household items which you just see all around the house and then you don't actually get to know that, okay, this substance that is inside of this battery is actually acidic, right? So we are now able to identify some common sources of acids in the house or in the home in the household right so now having known that we should now also be able to list right and identify strong acids right so this will also be defined or characterized as being weak acids they are weak acids the acids which um, would not cause that much harm right we'll look uh, at the properties right we'll look at the properties of acids and how they are corrosive but when you drink or when you're having, you're eating a lemon, it, the taste is sour, okay? The taste is sour, but it's not necessarily corrosive. It won't necessarily burn your skin. But we have a group of acids. We have a group of acids which are known as strong acids, right? Which are known as strong acids. And these acids are able to even burn your skin, right? So I hope you guys, um, right now, I know you have access to the internet. So if you may just search, right, and find out the three common strong acids that we deal with in the laboratory. I'll give you maybe a couple of minutes for you guys to just look for those strong acids. Okay, a couple of minutes. Two. Couple is two. Yeah. Okay. Welcome back. Right. So I hope you guys uh, have been able to look for some of the strong acids and you're able to identify some of the strong acids that we deal with in the lab. Right, so what I have now are the three, the three common acids that we usually deal with in the lab. What are these three acids? So if you are looking at them, you should be able to look at, first one is sulfuric acid, sulfuric acid with the formula H2SO4, that is a strong acid, right? The, the one that I'm pointing at right now, that is hydrochloric acid with the formula HCl, the last one is nitric acid, nitric acid with the formula HNO3 with the formula HNO3. Okay, so why are we mentioning this? These are basically the main examples of acids. If you were to walk, remember you are you are you are you are scientists, right? And when you walk into the laboratory, you should be able to just say, okay, I need an acid, I need to prepare something and it requires a strong acid. What acid should I use? Then you just see a bottle mark H2SO4 then you know definitely that is an acid. I can use it for a specific experiment that I want to conduct. Right, so now that we now know our household acids, right, household acids, and the strong acids, the strong acids which we find in the laboratory, and we should be able to differentiate them. If I was to say, uh, if I was to say, Bradley, may you please give me two strong acids and two weak acids, you should then be able to list 
right? To identify those two as strong assets and identify the other two just as household assets which are usually weak. They are usually weak in nature. Right. Now let us look at the chemical composition of these acids. Let us look at the chemical composition of these acids. So these acids, if you notice, there is a table, right? You guys are having a table where you have the name of the acid, you have the formula of the acid, you have the cut ion that is present in the acid. You have the cut ion and you have the anion. Do you know what a cut ion is? Do you know what an anion is? You must know what a cut ion is and you must know what an iron ion is because we talked about this. Remember, what did we say a cut ion is? Yes, I can see you scratching your head. I can see you trying to recall. Maybe it's proving difficult. But if you recall, we said a cut ion, these are positively charged ions. Whilst anions, these are negatively charged ions. Right? So when we have an acid, when we're looking at the chemical composition of acids, chemical composition of acids, these are substances which dissociate, dissolve in water, and they dissociate completely if they're strong acids. And how, when they dissociate, what do they give us, right? What do they give us? If you're looking at the table, uh, just try to write the products of the dissociation of hydrochloric acids, hydrochloric acid, and the products of the dissociation of sulfuric acid. Try to draw, it's there on the, on the paper, but I want you to then write it again so that you can then tell yourself to say, okay, so this is the cut iron. Write the word in full, uh, the chemical formula in full, H2SO4, right? And then the hydrochloric acid, HCl, write it in full there, HCl, and then break it down to show the cut iron and the anion, right? And then I'll, I'll confirm to you just now if what you wrote is the correct thing. Okay, so welcome back again. Right, so you guys now have managed to write down your uh, hydrochloric acid, right? You've managed to write down your hydrochloric acid and having written down your hydrochloric acid, you are now able to observe how that hydrochloric acid, right? The hydrochloric acid which we have here, right? That is the hydrochloric acid. And look, observe how it is now breaking down and you now have the H plus and the Cl minus, right? So. The hydrochloric acid, when it breaks down, when it decomposes, you are now left with the hydrogen ion, right? The hydrogen ion, which is that one, H+. And then you also have the chlorine ion, which is that one. The chlorine ion is the chloride. We call it chloride, right? It's chloride ion, and it's Cl-. minus. So that one has dissociated. That's what we mean when we say the chemical composition of uh, the hydrochloric acid because it breaks down to, gives, uh, to give us hydrogen plus and Cl minus. That is our hydrogen ion and cut ion, right? And the chloride anion. Let us look also at sulfuric acid, right? So we also have sulfuric acid there. And it's, at first, the formula is H2SO4. H2SO4. Observe how it breaks down to give us H plus, the cut ion, H plus, and it gives us the anion SO4 2 minus, right? SO4 2 minus. The sulfate anion is SO4 2 minus, right? SO4 2 minus, right? So where does it get this 2 minus from? Because remember, this is H2SO4. If we were to then bring this one down, and bring this one down, and go back to this one. Remember how we. In the previous lessons, we looked at how we write chemical equations. When I say remember, I'm in my brain, I'm hoping that you actually remember how to write the chemical equation. The steps, you wrote down the steps, right? I'm standing in your classroom and I'm seeing your books here. I hope you have at least a textbook. And But because you have a smartphone, again, you can just Google steps to follow when writing a chemical formula. Right, so that's how the, the, the acid basically dissociates. If you put it in water, it's going to break down into the hydrogen ions and it's also going to break down into the sulfate ions. Okay, so it's always going to have the positive ion, the cut ion being H+. That one is always going to be there. When an acid breaks down, the H+, is always going to be there. That is always going to be the cut ion. The anion, right, that is present depends on the respective 
compound that is attached to the hydrogen, right? So in this case, if you look at hydrogen, sulfate is attached to it. So this is the anion, right? The SO4 minus is the anion that you get. So if you look at your table, you have the chloride anion, the sulfate, the nitrate. Fix on your table, make it SO4 2 minus. SO4 2 minus. You have the nitrate. I even put the one for acetic acid, right? For the vinegar is also there, right? So it shows you how basically your acid decomposes or breaks down when it's placed in water, right? So the acid is composed of a positive cation, which is always hydrogen, hydrogen H+, and a corresponding anion, right? In some cases, it can be the nitrate ion, it could be the sulfate ion, it could be the chloride ion, depending on the acid which you are dealing with right now let us go on to look at uh, indicators right ph the whole concept of ph and indicators right so i'll need you guys to again just have a read have a read on the concept of indicators before i explain it right before i explain it just read about it so that the words that i'll be saying don't just fly past you okay welcome back again guys Right, so now we want to look at uh, the final part of this lesson, which are the indicators, right? So we have been talking about acids, right? In the next lesson, we'll talk about bases. But then uh, we have chemicals that we use uh, to help us to identify what an acid is and what a base is, right? Hold on, I'll just have to close the window. Okay, so like I was saying, we would uh, we have chemicals that we use to identify acids right and these are known as indicators okay these are known as indicators so you should be able to define the term indicator right a substance which is used to determine the acidity or basicity of a substance right this is a chemical we can have it in the form i've written uh indicators that we use right we'll look at the different indicators but just know that the indicator is a substance that can be used to predict, right, or to determine the acidity or basicity of an unknown substance. So if you have an unknown substance and you are thinking, is this substance an acid or is it a base? Is it alkaline? You use these pH papers, you use these litmus papers, and you are able to determine with a high degree of certainty whether that substance is an acid or it is a base. Right, so now let us look at the first one. We have uh, this indicator which is known as litmus paper, right? Litmus paper, we have it there, that is litmus paper. Litmus paper is found, firstly, we have blue litmus paper and we also have red litmus paper. Blue litmus paper, red litmus paper. Okay, so with blue litmus paper, what it does is that blue litmus paper when placed in an unknown substance. If blue litmus paper is placed in an unknown, in, in unknown substance, if blue litmus paper changes to red, if its color, its color is blue, right? It's a strip of paper, right? I'm going to attach a video. I'm going to attach a video. I'm going to send a video. Uh, whilst you are listening or watching this video, right? You can then pause and then you can watch a video that I've also sent along with this one, which will show you different uh, litmus papers. So if the litmus paper, the blue one, if it is dipped into a substance and it changes from blue to red, this one, if it changes from blue to red, if it changes from blue to red, what will that substance be? The substance in which that litmus paper would have been dipped into, that substance would be acidic. This would mean that the substance is Acidic. It is acidic. So if you take your litmus paper and you dip it into a liquid, right, and it changes from blue to red, it means that substance is acidic. However, if it is blue, okay, if it is blue and then it remains blue, blue to blue, remember team blue, if it remains blue to blue, that means that it's not acidic, but it is in fact what is the opposite of acidic? The opposite of acidic is basic. The opposite of acidic is basic. 
Right, so if you remember, we had Team Blue and we had Team Red. Uh, I remember Team Blue, my team, winning those house games, right? But if we have blue and it remains blue, that means the substance is basic. But if it is blue and it changes to red, then that substance is acidic. That's if you're using blue litmus paper. We also have what we know as red litmus paper. The original color of the litmus paper, you can then just rewind and you go back and listen if you didn't really get what I said. Then we also have red litmus paper. If we dip red litmus paper into a substance and it changes from red to blue, if it changes from red to blue, then again it means that substance is basic. It is an alkaline. If red litmus paper changes to blue, if it changes to blue, then that substance is alkaline. That substance is alkaline. That substance is alkaline or it is basic. But if the red litmus paper remains red, it does not change, it remains red, then that means that substance is acidic. Because you only have, it only gives you two options to say, is the substance acidic or is it alkaline, right? Then we also have, we'll talk about neutral substances, right, later. Okay, so that is what we use our litmus paper for. That is what we use our litmus paper for. But now on you guys, on your tables or on your documents, you have clearly labeled pH scales, right? I have put on uh, your documents pH scales, which are even showing uh, some common substances that you know. There is stomach acid there, showing you what the pH of stomach acid is there. It's a pH of one, the acid that is in your stomach right now. So I say, in your stomach, there is acid with the pH of 1 right now. How is it not eating up your stomach? No, that is biology. Your stomach and your whole body is protected. There is homeostasis in there. It all balances itself out. But in your stomach, there is an acid with a pH of 1. Right, now, we also have what we know as the universal indicator. The universal indicator is a liquid. Right, is a liquid in, in which, or a paper, right, pH paper, where if you dip it into a substance, right, if you dip it into a substance like the pH paper, you dip it into a substance, it will change into one of these different, you have about 13 colors there. You have about 13 colors, varying colors, right? So this pH paper then moves hand in hand, it moves hand in hand with a pH scale. Right? So if you get a paper, if you get a color and it's maybe indigo, indigo, wow, if it's maybe orange, <laughs> if it's maybe orange, or if it's maybe red, okay, or violet, no more colors that you guys know, right? If you take that pH paper and then you place it on a pH scale, you would be able to determine the specific pH of that substance. Right? Now observe that with the universal indicator and the pH scale or the pH paper and the pH scale, you can now actually get to see the specific pH of the substance. The litmus paper only tells you to say is the substance acidic or basic. The pH paper instead is able to tell you if a substance is A, acidic, and it's also able to tell you B, how strongly acidic or how weak an acid that acid is. So we have a pH scale moving from 0 to 6 for acids. Remember, we're only dealing with acids today. So from 1 to 6, those are the acids. And if something has a pH of 1, that is strongly acidic. pH of 1, pH of 2, pH of 3, those are strong acids. pH of 4, 5 and 6, those are weak acids. pH 7, that is neutral. Do we know a neutral substance? You will tell me in the group which neutral substance that you know that has a pH of 7 or different uh, neutral substances that you know that have a pH of 7. Right, so guys, at this point, uh, I hope that we are now able to, uh, to have satisfied 
our objectives of this lesson if we are in our house and then we look at uh, containers with different chemicals in them are we able to say that is an acid that is a base even from the chemicals that are written there if you look at ingredients right or composition of whatever chemical you'll be having you should be able to tell that okay this one is having an acid inside of it we are also able now to describe the chemical composition of acids uh, we are also able now to tell how we then get to detect uh, this acid using what we call them, using indicators, using indicators, uh, pH paper, litmus paper, universal indicator, right? So I will catch you guys in our WhatsApp group and you can ask the questions if there is anything that you have not understood. Uh, again, thank you guys. You have been great, you are the best, and as always I would like to say, do not worry, you understand these things, right? Just keep telling yourself that I understand these things. You must always tell yourself, uh, if it's in the morning or when we're having the lesson, say, I've got this, I've got this. At the bottom of the page, what does it say? Free your imagination, free your imagination, imagination is everything. The moment you just say, I can do this, then you can do it. Marshall A.C. Candiado. I'll see you guys next time.